Jump King is one of the hardest games of all time. It's known as a Fadian game and one that makes streamers rage very often. What? That's crazy. Oh, I fell again. Chances are you've heard of Jump King before, but if you haven't, well, strap in. You're about to see how I became only the 60th person in the world to ever earn Jump King's Platinum Trophy, which is the equivalent of earning all achievements on Xbox or Steam. This Platinum is a 10 out of 10 in difficulty and requires over 18 playthroughs and 60 hours, although these numbers could not be further from the truth. The gameplay is simple. We can move left and right, and we can jump, and that's really it. Now, you know how to play Jump King for yourself. Our goal on every run is to get to the top because legend has it, there's a smoking hot babe up there. I started off my journey by just getting a feel for the controls, timing my jumps and learning the distances is key because the longer you hold down the jump button, the farther you'll go. I learned this very quickly because I was stuck on these few screens here for that longer works. than I'd care to admit. Oh, oh, okay. First, uh, okay. First fail. All right. I, I didn't plan to do that. In fact, it wasn't long before I earned my first trophy. Oh, if only, yeah, 100 falls. First trophy, let's go. This is a momentous moment. This means I cannot give up on it because it's forever on my profile. The description for this trophy is hilarious. If only you knew. It's honestly the perfect way to sum this game up. Trust me. And let's talk about Jump King's trophies. There's general trophies that include the one I just earned for falling 1,000 times. I just got a shameful trophy. A thousand times I fell. I'm not happy about that. And others for jumping 1,000 times. This game's like 13 bucks. Oh, new trophy. Only 19,000 more. There's also three total levels in the PlayStation version of the game with each level having their own trophies as well. These were originally DLC, but you have to play them for the platinum. We'll talk about the harder trophies later. For now, keep in mind you get rewarded for the first time you beat a level, so that's my goal. Back to my first attempt. Every time I came to a new screen, there was a new jump I had Come to on. learn. There's often multiple no. ways to get through a screen with a lot of cool speed strats. And there's also safety strategies as well. I'll eventually come to learn all of them. It took me several tries to learn how to do jumps like these, and this happened every time I came to a new screen. Every couple of screens is also known as a new area with a new set of challenges to learn and deal with. Like here, this area is called the False King's Keep. It doesn't seem too bad because if I fall, I land here. But then comes this dumb bird over here. There's a trophy for buying some shoes and beating the game with those shoes equipped. They're purely cosmetic, so it won't make the game any harder, but the merchant who sells the shoes is located a few screens up, and the problem is the only way to buy those shoes is to chase this bird here all the way to the end of the game, then come back down to the merchant to buy the shoes, meaning you have to go through the level basically twice with the shoes equipped. So my current goal is to chase this stupid bird who's just taunting me with his gold coin. A few screens later, I encountered one of the hardest jumps in the game known as the chimney jump, and here's how it went. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was beginner's luck. That jump is gonna cost me a lot of trouble during these trophy runs here. There's the bird. Oh, I fell. An example of how costly it is to make a mistake here. No, I didn't. It blends in with the background. I didn't know. <sighs> Falls like this would sometimes cost me 20 to 30 minutes or even hours. And when I finally did get back to that screen, I still had to figure out what to do and test different strats. Can I just walk? Nope. Nope, nope, you cannot, nope, oh my god, nope, you cannot just walk. In a similar fashion later, when I got to this screen, I can't lie, it was starting to get to me. Bro! <laughs> it's like a vicious cycle, can I make it on top of the- oh, I made it. Oh my goodness, I made it. Bro. <laughs> oh, this is- a sick joke. And don't forget, I'm still chasing that stupid bird. I'm not gonna lie, these jumps are crazy. These jumps are crazy because there, there's only like a small spot you can stand on. Can I get to the bird this way? This screen here is actually where this specific fall happened. Bro, <laughs> bro, I just fell like 12 screens. At this point, I came up with the three rules for success in Jump King. Number one, learn the jumps every time I get to a new screen. Finally, I got to this next area, which introduces an entirely new mechanic involving wind. Oh, I know about this area. The wind pushes you. As you can probably tell already, the wind heavily pushes you in the direction that it's blowing. The bird is right there. Do I go for the bird? The bird still moves away. Oh, wait, 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 I got a trophy. That bird. That's how I feel right now, that bird. Believe me, I fell quite a bit here. But eventually, I did learn some really cool strats again. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the wind to change. Go up. 
Oh my goodness. Every jump I made here was extremely nerve wracking because <laughs> it's hard to tell where you're gonna land with some of these jumps. Oh, and there's snow here, which makes it so you can't walk to adjust your positioning before each jump. Eventually I got to the last screen of this area where the bird finally drops the gold coin that I need. Except this is where I began to show how badly I choke oh when the lights get too Go up bright. Again. No! <laughs> That damn bird, the coin is there, I saw it. Because this jump here just kept getting the best of me. So now I'm gonna stand all the way to the left, jump straight up, perfect. Jump straight up. Yo, how do you do it? Straight up. How do you do this? Bruh. It's right there, it's right there. Straight up. No, <laughs> it's right there. No, what? What did I do wrong? Why did? What is going on? Bro, what do I do? Finally, an hour later, this happened. I do my own jump without the wind. Oh my God, I made it. Oh my God. Give me the coin. Did it. Trophy! Fool's Paradise! Oh my goodness. I mentioned I needed to go back down once I got the gold coin, but in reality, because of this trophy existing called Big Spender, I needed to do that same thing on nine more runs before purchasing the shoes so I could earn the oh trophy. No. Which is why I didn't immediately head back down after catching the bird. This chapel area is honestly oh, pretty right. free, but it's a calm before the storm because the next area called Blue Ruin is every new Jump King player's worst nightmare. The devs were not playing around here. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. This is the icy area where you slip around on every platform. Any small mistake here sends you back sure. down to the chapel. Thankfully, the devs blessed us by making the chapel a checkpoint because I cannot imagine what I do falling down here back into the windy area. Bro. <laughs> As per usual, since I wasn't very good at the video game, I had to spend another hour or so just practicing here before I finally got to the tower, the final area of the game where the smoke and hot babe was waiting. These jumps are so precise. Oh, oh, that was unfortunate. Bro, you fall so far. <laughs> you fall so far. This is ridiculous. Music gets all cool here. All right, because I keep falling, I need to take the time to appreciate the soundtrack now. So let's take some time, deep breaths. Listen to the music, take a little break. All right, break time's over. There we go. Okay. Well, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. Bro, oh, this is ridiculous. I definitely overthought that. In my head, I'm like, oh, this is easy. 
<laughs> no, that was that's just laughable. I did it! Let's go! Oh my goodness, Jump King! Let's go! That's one playthrough out of 18. Finally, I got my crown. I got the babe too, and that crown is very important. I need to beat the game with the crown. <laughs> need to beat the game, the game again with the crown for another trophy. All right, completed it on attempt one, session six. Eight and a half hours, 14,000 jumps and 1,500 falls. <laughs> That's crazy. Honestly, the feeling of finally beating this game even one time was amazing. My next goal was to beat the game again, but this time also avoid the bird, which means this run makes no progress towards the big spender trophy. Okay, I avoided the bird successfully. Now when I beat the game, I will get two trophies. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. The second time through this level was so much easier. So much so, in fact, that I realized halfway through that I had a real shot at the first speedrun trophy of the game. You see, there's a trophy for beating the game in under one hour. There's another one for beating it in 15 minutes, but that'll come later. For now, you can clearly see the stress on my face here, knowing I was just moments away from completing the first speedrun. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's go. Fool me twice. That's for avoiding the bird. Come on, give me my trophies. Swift jumper for one hour. And there should be a third one. Double king. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. It's only been a couple hours since the first one, too. At this point, I completed several partial playthroughs so I could collect enough coins for Big Spender. There we go. Give me that gold coin. <gasps> Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. Give me that gold coin. So that's number two. All right. Another playthrough in the books. I have myself three gold rings. Along the way, I earned the final milestone trophy for 20,000 jumps. A false King's Keep. That doesn't rhyme. Oh. Trophy. My lord is a true veteran in the art of jumping. 20,000 jumps. 20,000 jumps and I have seven gold rings. So this is like the ninth playthrough. <laughs> okay. This should be the tenth coin, man. This should be the tenth coin. Let's check. Finally, I have all ten. I can go buy the shoes. Which is exactly what I did. I put my new kicks on and saved the babe yet again. Fashionable, let's go. Okay, own the special boots. And big spender, two trophies at once and we'll get another trophy for finishing this run too. Before moving on to the first DLC map, I decided to finish up the 15 minute speed run. By now, I had a dozen attempts of practice under my belt, so I felt confident I could get this done. After beating the game, you unlock a timer at the top as well, which is pretty nice. It's crazy how fast I got to this point here, considering it took me eight hours to beat the map the first time. Easy. Ice section, easy. And it was looking good until this happened. No! Look how far I fell! But I still had two minutes on the timer, so I had to lock in. This is it! We did it! 15 minutes! I saved it! I saved it! Lightning speed jumper! Let's go! That really should have been like nine minutes. That really should have been like nine minutes. <laughs> And now it was finally time to begin New Bay Plus, which is the first DLC map. If you thought the original game was hard, this DLC is downright evil. The very first section is a snowy area with some very tough jumps. In addition, the game has several trophies for what I like to call challenge runs. You have to beat every map with giant shoes and the snake ring. The shoes make it so you can't walk, kind of like if you were in snow, but on the entire map. And the ring makes every surface slippery. To even attempt these challenge runs, you have to first unlock each item. Both items are found in New Bay Plus. You get the shoes for collecting 10 
10 hidden coins all throughout the map and you get the ring for chasing yet another bird. The evil part is both items require you to basically get to the end of the map and again go all the way back down to the beginning just like the sneakers on the first map. After getting through the snowy section you come across the ice section. That's right they throw all the stops at you right in the beginning. There's several coins hidden in secret sections here too which are very easy to miss. After some scary jumps where you're bound to fall like so you get to the windy section of the map right away. Oh, damn. Okay, wait. So if I jump, ag I'm going to jump against the wind. I had some scary falls here, and that was before I even got to chimney jump 2.0. There's a pretty cool setup here for this jump, but I wouldn't learn that strat for like another five weeks. For now, I just winged it. Big jump. Full send. That was a bad idea. We're not doing that again. Oh! I soon came across the area that would end up making me almost cry during Zero Fall Runs later. This section might be in contention for the hardest area in the entire game. Every jump and surface leaves almost no room for error, which was bad news for me because this brings me to the second rule for success in Jump King, don't fall. I don't know how many times I broke this rule, which sucks because had I followed my own rules, this entire Platinum would have been much easier. But can you blame me? I mean, look at these screens. Look at how careful I have to be to make each obstacle. And this whole section comes just a few moments after this one. Just a reminder, I have to get through here with no falls later. And for another cherry on top, yet another new mechanic was introduced in the next section. I actually earned a trophy for just reaching it. This is the water section. And the gimmick here is that my movement and jumps are much, much slower. A maximum jump is like 50% longer. You don't jump further or anything, it just takes longer for each jump. This is actually the last area before the tower for this map where the babe is waiting. But not so fast, because the last coin is all the way up here. So before I go to the top, I had some items to collect back at the beginning. Chasing the bird back down along the way, I eventually was able to make the first purchase, the giant boots. The snake ring then required me to go back down to the snowy area before making my way back up to receive my reward. And finally, it was time to take on the dark tower, one of my absolute favorite areas of the entire game. The gimmick here is there's fake walls and floors all over the place. They're pretty easy to identify, honestly, but they make it so there's several routes you can take on the way up. That's a fake wall. That's a fake platform to the right. I can go right here. I cannot. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. I fell even further. Nice. Can I just, can I just do this? I'm gonna do it. 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 Oh, you can. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd hit the top. I didn't know if I hit the top. Can I bounce off the wall? Will that work? I'm gonna do it. it. Does work. Okay. There's a fake wall to the left right there. Can I go there? I can go to that one right there. That one in the middle, really thin platform looks real. And I fell. That's a far jump. I don't want to make that jump. Oh, okay, okay. Full left. I can go right there to the right. Full left. Let's go! That's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. New King Plus. That, that's not too bad. The end of this map is not too bad. It's not too bad at all. It's the water. It's the water section that messes you up. That water section is going to end so many runs. I decided to go back to the main game before DLC 2 to tackle the challenge runs beginning with the giant boots. Uh. I definitely underestimated the difficulty of not being able to walk at all. Easy jumps became real challenges. Hard jumps became even bigger challenges. Damn it! <laughs> Okay. It even led to downright laughable moments like this. Yo, I'm gonna fall if I jump. Yo, I can't. That little Tetris piece is strategically there. I'm gonna fall if I jump. If I jump to the right, I'm gonna fall. I know I'm gonna fall. Like, come on, bro. Like, and then I'm back down here. Yo, that's an evil, 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 evil placement right there, man. Evil, bro. This part. Oh, that wasn't so bad. 
The toughest adjustment was when I got to the icy area because the game forces you to learn an entirely new way to deal with slipping. You have to do short mini hops in the opposite direction so you don't fall off. It's actually easier than it looks, but it did take me a few minutes to get used to it. Using this strat, I tackled these all too familiar screens again until I reached the tower. I no longer needed to do the short hops, so that surely meant this section is easier, right? Wrong. No! Oh, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. This is so tough to do when you can't walk! This is so tough when you can't walk! No! Okay. God damn it! Oh my god, I beat it, I beat it, I beat it! Oh wait, I didn't beat it, I didn't beat it. Fuck! Uh, no! <laughs> No! I'm falling all the way down, bro! Oh my god, I was at the end! That is the worst fall of the entire... My 20 hours so far. That's the worst fall, god damn it! Finally! 153, man! 153! Oh my goodness, this trophy was so difficult. And you have to do this two more times on the other maps. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. The snake ring run had its own challenges, but it actually made the snowy section easier since it allows you to walk through snow. This strat would end up helping me quite a bit later, but for now, it allowed me to get to the tower in just an hour. Oh, that rhymed. Oh my goodness. The tower had its own challenges though, because I ended up spending nearly 30 minutes on just these last few screens to finish this entire run. Oh! Oh wow, that, that worked out. No! Come on, don't fall. Come on. Bruh. <laughs> push right, push right. Let's go! <gasps> I almost over, I was overthinking on that last the last two jumps right there, I was overthinking. Let's go. And then somehow my confidence was through the roof after those runs, and I felt like I was ready to tackle the zero fall run on the main game. Here's how it went. It feels like a good time to bring up the third and final rule for success in Jump King. Try again, scrub. And that's what I did for a little while. All right, this is the run killer right here. Oh my God, we did it. Oh no! <laughs> How did I do the chimney jump and then mess up? Damn it. <laughs> oh man, it only takes three minutes to get back there. Don't worry. Three minutes. Oh! Okay, eventually I realized I was in fact not ready, so I moved on to DLC 2, Ghost of the Bay. This is by far the hardest map. As usual, we start off with collecting some items. These are cosmetic unlike the boots and ring from DLC 1. Oh, I got a trophy. Disciple of the Forest Scholar. Don't even know what that means. He gave me a hat. <laughs> I like it. Then we get to a new area called the Bog. Oh, am I, am I so? Oh, I've seen gameplay of the bog. I think you are supposed to fall down here. This area is a mixture of being underwater while also being unable to walk as if we were stuck in snow. Normally this area would be extremely difficult, but then I came to a huge realization. Right now in the bog, you can't move. I'm like pushing the analog stick left to right. You can't move. But this item, which is supposed to make it harder, it's helping me right now. It lets you move because the floors are slippery with the snake ring. So I decided I'm just going to use the snake ring for the bog. 
The next area is pretty straightforward. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's very difficult the first time you go through it, but by this time, I was very used to failing jumps the first few moments and then figuring out how to overcome them. In the following area, there was a pretty annoying trophy I had to earn. This time, I had to chase around a fly for a while. I actually had to jump up and down these screens until I touched the fly around 20 times to earn my reward. This DLC is full of random trophies because a few screens later, there was another one for finding a cat. Up next was the Phantom Tower, another very difficult area that ended up becoming one of my favorites in the entire game. Making mistakes here was extremely costly though. Bruh. <laughs> Yo, that tower is so tough. I still think this area is awesome because of all the secret platforms you can jump to. You see, the best strategy across the entire game is to find as many full jumps as possible. These are jumps that you don't have to necessarily time because you hold jump for as long as you can. Only your positioning and the direction you jump matters. This phantom tower is almost all full jumps, even though it doesn't seem like it, which is why I think it's cool. Okay. I can't believe I just did that casually. I know this part. This is not the end. It looks like the end, but there's more. And then comes a new area and another new mechanic. Yo, what's up with the developers and the DLCs? They put water everywhere and it messes with the physics. They got the bog. They have the, the water section in, in DLC 1. Now they have this too. I'm so focused up. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Medium jump again. Oh my god. All right, hold on. I didn't fall. I didn't fall. <laughs> I think if I do fall though, I just fall to the below screen. I don't think you fall out of this section, but I don't want to test that. Oh, there's a trophy right here. Yo, they got the shades. They have cigarettes. <laughs> they got the cool music. I can't really read what they're saying though. I don't like the font. Yo, is that a cat? Okay, so I was very wrong about where I'd fall if I made a mistake here. Yo, this is ridiculous. This is this is okay. This, oh no! How did that happen? Oh my goodness. I'd rather fall this way. I'd, no! How does that keep happening? Oh my god! <laughs> so we do not need to talk about what happened with that timer. Let's just move on. What? That next screen looks crazy! One after- the screen after this looks ridiculous! This screen right here looks crazy! What is this?! <laughs> So this is the final area of the entire game, and it of course introduces a brand new mechanic that isn't found anywhere else. Quicksand. Oh! Oh, this is kind of cool. These floors don't allow you to stand still for more than a few seconds, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Making any mistake here makes you fall all the way back down to the waterfall section. No! Yo, I can't move! Oh no! <laughs> I can't move! Oh my god! I ended up having to take a break and watch more of the guide before getting back on to beat the level for a few more sweet trophies. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness, come on. Let's go! Regal attire! Exorcist King! Two in a row! Yo, look at the sun or the moon! I, there's an eclipse going on. There's my attire. Regal attire. Give me that, I need that. And my crown, I need that. Let's go! Now I have the real fit, the fit of a king, let's go. Afterwards, I went back to complete the two challenge runs on Nubay Plus, beginning with the giant boots and then a separate playthrough later for the snake ring. And since I was already in the challenge run spirit, my next focus after that was the giant boots on Ghost of the Babe. This was the map I had the least practice on thus far, so these next few runs would be crucial practice for later. Again, I do not want to talk about that timer. Okay.
That was so close too. All right, this room I know how to do. I know how to do this room. This room's actually not that bad anymore. Come on. Bro. Okay. Sweet. Very easy jump right here. Come on, man. Very easy jump right here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Don't choke, bro. Don't choke! Don't choke! <gasps> yes! Oh my gosh! Giant loop, oh, giant leaps ghost. I can't read. Oh my goodness, my heart is pounding. <laughs> is pounding and there's still another one to do and i failed so many speed runs to get to this point it's ridiculous there were two speedrun trophies left to acquire, both being on DLC 2. My goal was to beat this map in under 30 minutes to earn both trophies at the same time. If you don't think about it, that just made sense. No! My concerns were that there were many run killers on this map. In fact, I wouldn't earn another trophy for nearly eight days. That's eight days of practicing this map, learning the ins and outs, and failing, of course, while streaming my attempts every time. That was the one. That was the one, yo. Ah! Ah, oh, that was the one! No! I got close to the end a few times, and even when I fell at the quicksand section, I knew it only took about three minutes to get through it, so I didn't give up. No! <laughs> oh! No! Oh no, we got time, we got time, we got time, we got time. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Damn it! It's been like a week since I practiced! No! Oh, that's the one, that's the 30 minutes gone. No! Oh, I was doing so good. Wait, 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 wait! No, oh, I was supposed to land right there! What? That has never happened before. I think I'm good though. I think I'm gonna land on top of... No, I'm not. There's a little ramp right there. I didn't know that was there. Of course that's there. I eventually made it to the tower with 14 minutes to spare. That's enough time to fall a couple times and still make it back up. Dozens of hours of practice led me to this moment. Oh my goodness, this room is so stressful. This is the only place you can stop in this room. I fell. Mm. Damn it! We have a lot of time though. It only takes like a minute to get back. I was so nervous. Oh, my heart is racing. No, <laughs> that was it. If you know me though, you know I definitely don't give up. And the very next attempt, I had about 10 minutes to spare this time. This is how the final run went. Words cannot explain how I was feeling at this moment. I did it, let's go! Let's go, finally! Finally! Oh my god! Finally, I told you that it was a day! It's not gonna cost me any money! The final challenge run was a snake ring on Ghost of the Babe. Again, we definitely do not need to talk about that timer. Oh my goodness, that was so close. Okay. This room is not that bad. Room's not that bad, come on. Oh my god, okay. This room is also not that bad. Room's low-key free. Low-key free. 
I definitely could have gone closer for that jump. Nice. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, can I get to the safe spot, bro? Oh my god, I can't get to the safe spot. This is stressful. All right, whatever, 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 whatever. Bro. Oh my god. <gasps> I did it! I did it! Oh my god, I can't yell. It's like 1 a.m. right now. Yo, I was trying to get to that one spot. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get there. I couldn't get there. It was stressing me out. Oh my god, I almost fell off too. I gotta go. I gotta rewind it. I almost fell off on that second to last jump all to the left. Oh my god. I was finally at the final phase of Jump King. I had three trophies left to earn. All of the zero fall runs. How did the babe get to the top? These are the real questions. How did she get to the top? They never explained it. I need a Jump King too. I need the lore to be completed. How did she get there? By the way, DLC 2 says beat the map with two falls, but these are built into the map and technically forced. Yo, she must have like hamstring, not hamstring, thighs of steel, just like the Jump King. You gotta jump real far to get up there. I of course began with the easiest map, the main babe. Damn! What followed was a four hour stream where I was consistently making mistakes on areas I knew I mastered. Couple things, every time I've uh, gotten to a difficult jump and I was talking, I messed up. Like that, point proven. Not a difficult jump though, so I guess not point proven. Uh, and then other times I would be reading chat when I get to a difficult jump and I mess up. Therefore, when we get to a difficult jump, don't slow down, don't read chat, don't talk, and that's the recipe for success. The issue was more so not being focused and just hanging out with chat rather than actually locking in and getting it done. That's off. That's not a fall. <laughs> okay, yo, I'm still at zero. It's because I hit the little ramp right here. Yeah, I was just showing you the mechanic. That was just an example of the mechanic is all, is if you land on a slope, it's not a fall. I truly believe I should have been able to do this in a shorter time frame because surprisingly the main babe is very easy after you put in about 100 hours of practice. Who would have thought? One of the most common questions I got was how long the run is, and the answer is it's around 7 to 8 minutes. However, the world record time is in the 4 minute mark, but don't even think for a second that I was going to get even close to world record time. And finally, this was my best run yet. Let's go! Let's go! Finally! Oh my god! With only two trophies remaining, nothing could prepare me for what awaited me. It would end up nearly taking 18 days from the time I popped the last trophy to when I finally earned that elusive ultra rare plat. That was planned. Of course, I left the hardest map for last, or so I thought. Through about five days worth of streams, I began really perfecting strategies I had learned throughout the whole journey. Things like utilizing the snake ring on the snow, learning all the full jump strategies, and the chimney jump 2.0 setup. No! Ah! Which looks like this. That's one of my favorite setups in the whole game, by the way. All this still could not prepare me for the hardest sections of the whole map. Lost Frontier. I mentioned earlier that this area almost made me cry. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought I didn't make it. I love the music in this game. No! Damn, you fall so far too. Damn, bro. And it's because of how difficult the zero fall runs were in this section. No way, bro. Literally, literally the next jump after my best attempt, I fell. That's not even a hard jump. I wasn't even paying attention, bro. There's no speedrun trophy for DLC 1 for some reason, so I had a little less time on this map compared to the other two. What? Oh my God. How did I make that? <laughs> what? <laughs> But I still spent plenty of time on the challenge runs and I had watched dozens of speed runs through here of other YouTubers so I knew what the optimal route was. My issue was execution and the anxiety I felt every time leading to mistakes like this one. That's a fall. That's a fall. And as a result, 
all these failed streams and dozens of attempts. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I ended up having this run off stream where I didn't need to focus on the chat. By the way, I'll link important runs in the pinned comments down below. This is arguably the final difficult section of the entire level, or at least that's how I felt about it. I did learn a few full jump setups here though, which was a matter of execution. And then we reached the water section, which is basically all full jumps again. Quite literally one of the easiest sections of the entire game, which is ironic considering I thought it was crazy difficult the first time I played through it. And finally, Finally, the Dark Tower. I knew the route I had to take and where to set up each jump. My nerves were getting to me and I was really trying to be intentional with each jump. You can tell by my face, I was so done with this game at this point. I really think these last two trophies affected me in ways I can never recover from. Anyways, look at some of these jumps. I'm telling you guys, this section is so cool. Finally, one last setup to get to the final screen for the trophy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was actually distracted and I th Yes! Oh my god. I just spent so so many days and the Knicks tied it up. So many my head actually hurts. My head hurts. Oh my god. One trophy left. And then there was one left. Ghost of the Babe was full of crazy jumps and setups, beginning with another favorite setup of mine that allows you to skip 90% of the bog. I then used the snake ring trick for the remainder of the area. It feels like every section of this map had at least one nerve wracking jump. There were countless moments like this. <sighs> That's a flaw. The House of Nine Lives had one screen in particular that ended a minimum of 50 runs for me by itself. Oh. No! Damn it. Whenever I did finally get past the screen, the difficulty only increased with each section leading to bonks like this. Oh, really? Ah, uh, ah, uh, damn it. One of my biggest struggles with failing so far into a run is simply getting back to that point because I would still constantly fail on earlier portions. Eventually, I was able to make it to the waterfall area within only six to seven minutes. But this brought its own problems. Since it was so far into the map, I had to jump literal leaps and bounds to get there. I had the least amount of practice out of any other area in the game. Literally days later, with many, many more hours of practice under my belt, I found myself in the quicksand tower just a few moments away from rescuing the smoking hot babe one final time. I had studied dozens of runs online, I had completed dozens of runs myself, and it showed with the skill with which I was jumping all leading up to this moment. I literally had no words. I decided that was enough for that day and hopped back on stream the next day. I got to the tower so fast yet again and decided to take my sweet time with every single jump. I predicted with chat that I would beat the map in exactly 10 minutes and I had gotten to this section in under eight, so I had plenty of time to spare. You can see with every single jump, I was jumping out of the sand several times before moving forward. That was just me being overly cautious. I even walked back and forth over and over to set up a full jump on this screen. This next strat was one I started using over 150 hours in, and I did it a couple times in the previous screens below. I would allow myself to sink just a little bit, allowing me to do a full jump to the next spot, which was much easier than timing my jump, but also a little bit riskier. And finally, the final screen again. I did it! Let's go! Let's go! It's done! It's done! It's finally done! Oh my gosh, let's go, King Among Kings! Finally! 10.08, 430 jumps. Oh, for the moment we've been waiting for, total stats. 153,760 jumps and 6,820 balls. I challenge you to beat that.